Let's just take a look at a couple other ones. If I go to uh, the schedule again, and let's go to number T. So it says uh, pension or annuity from a non-qualified, hold on, that's not the one I was looking at. Let's just go to U here, wages earned while incarcerated. So hopefully you're not incarcerated or anything, but if you are dealing with someone who's incarcerated and has wages while incarcerated, we might have to report those. So just to check those out, I'm gonna say, let's jump to, and so obviously those would go here. So there's just an example of that line. Again, these wages then would be summed up on down below, pull over to page one of the form 1040. And then if you go through this list of items up top and you think that something is included in income, but there is no location for it, then you might go to the other income down here. And remember, as you do that, the question is always going to be, is this something that's subject to self-employment tax? In which case you would, you might have to report it on a schedule C or something. Otherwise you might have to include it down here as uh, the other income and some items for that reimbursement of other amounts received for items deducted in an earlier year, such as medical expenses, real estate taxes, general sales tax, home mortgage interest, and so on. So again, you have another scenario, which is similar to the situation we talked about having income related to the, the, the uh, state tax. So if you got a state tax deduction, you've got the tax refund up top because if you got a deduction for the state tax in the prior year and you got a benefit from it, which would only happen if you had a schedule A and you were able to get the benefit from that deduction in the prior year, but then they refunded it. Then we have that scenario, which is quite common, which is why it's on number one of the schedule one, which is that you might have to include that refund in income. The rationale being the only other thing you could do would be go into the prior tax return and amend it. So you don't want to go prior tax return and amend it. You'd rather kind of fix it going forward here. You have a similar scenario with these other kind of reimbursements because the concept would be if you got a benefit from it last year, a deduction, and then they reimbursed something that you got a benefit from, from a reduction, a deduction, then you can either amend the prior year tax return, which would be quite tedious, or you could try to, if they allow you to fix it going forward, that would be the easier thing to do. Those things are easy to do. We got reemployment, trade adjustment, assistance, lost on certain corrective distributions, dividends on insurance policies, recapture of the charitable contribution deduction, a couple of those recapture items. So those are, those are the main ones down here. We got the taxable distributions from the Coverdell uh, education savings account or equivalent tuition distributions from these accounts may be taxable if, so that would be a situation where you had those benefit kind of investment plans that might be subject to tax. And if they were subject to tax, then that might be the way you'd have to put them down here on, uh, on the bottom line. So that's the, the, the catch all if no, if there's no other location to find it. But again, the general idea, and I'm going to stop saying again, I'm sorry for saying again so many times. I'll apologize again for saying again so many times again. But uh, the general rule is that you want to make sure that you're taking into consideration whether or not you are subject to the self-employment tax. Uh, if you are, then you might have to do a Schedule C or something like that. If you're not, then you would expect it possibly to be over here somewhere in the other income. If there's no line item for it, then you've got the catch-all category down here at the other income, line Z.